Exams finished without incident, and I think I did pretty well. I'm relieved to think I avoided any particularly bad scores. Our last test ended, then homeroom ended. Then we were finally back to regular school life. Nina was excited about getting back to running with the track team. And I was back to that task I agreed to after the Golden Week holidays. That should just about do it. Yes, I think this is quite enough. Thank you so much, Unison. Sure. I was cleaning the last untouched spots of the storage room. It was still pretty dirty for all the tidying up I'd done, but Maki-san would have to do the rest, like we planned. I was pretty tired after doing it all myself, though, especially when it came to moving some of the heavier boxes. But it was less stressful to not have to order someone else around. I was doing the cleaning by myself, but I wasn't actually alone. Sachi-san was always there to keep me company. Of course, Sachi-san's a ghost, so she couldn't actually help me clean. She did at least watch to see if anyone came close to the room, however. Now it's just a matter of guiding Maki-san to this place. Right. Sachi-san's voice sounded gleeful. She must have really been happy about being able to give Maki-san and Ihara-senpai a place where they could relax. I felt like I hadn't done enough to prepare the space, but it wouldn't be good to overdo it. I decided to be satisfied with the job I'd done. And at that moment, Megami's blood writing appeared on the other side of the window. Maki-chan's heading your way! She got the letters backwards. Well, I could still read it at least. Oh. That seems to be good timing. I'll get out of here. Yes, leave the rest to me. I'll guide Maki-chan here. Good luck. Yeah, I thought Maki-san might come here. You can't just skip the inner building if you're looking for secret places on campus. Sachi-san could handle the rest. Careful not to disturb the dust, I left the reference room. On the way to the Hoshikan building, after going downstairs, I crossed paths with Maki-san. She was glancing around as she walked, not paying particular attention to me. Not that that was strange, seeing as how we've never actually met. Oh, Yuna! Megumi came over to me when I left the building. Jeez, would it kill her not to glare like that? Well, you finished your cleaning, I assume. Yep. Megami's been in a bad mood since before I started working on the reference room. Jeez, you can do things on your own, can't you? Why do you have to take Sachi-san with you? I did clean on my own. Sachi-san couldn't help me after all. Sachi-san just decided to come with me herself. What's that supposed to mean? You should be happy you got to clean with Sachi-san watching over you. Thank her, why don't you? What exactly do you want me to do? This is all because she can't get into the inner building. She's frustrated because Sachi-san and I had to leave her alone while I was cleaning. But why should I care about that? This had better work. I won't allow it not to! It'll be fine, as long as Sachi-san can get Maki-san in there. Who? Oh? Sachi-san would never fail. Are you trying to imply something? You were the one wondering whether or not it would work. I just meant the Sachi-san will surely do her part, as long as you haven't messed up your cleaning. <sighs> I sighed and looked over at Megami. The ghost in the white sailor uniform. I learned a little about Sachi-san in our study session the other day, about her when she was alive. What about this one? I wonder what she was like when she went here. What are you glaring at me for? I'm not glaring. Why is she so antagonistic toward me? Well, she's probably just jealous because Sachi-san seems to like me. I might be able to get mad at her if it wasn't so obvious. Though it is exasperating, and irritating, and... And sometimes I'm surprised by the strength of Megumi's feelings for Sachi-san. She doesn't hide her love or her hostility toward me. She feels that strongly for Sachi-san. She's incredibly honest about it all. Is that what it means to love someone? Though I sort of get the feeling Megumi isn't exactly a typical case. I followed Megumi's gaze to the inner building and spotted Sachi-san floating over toward us. How'd it go? She found the room, and it seems she likes it. Yay! It will be wonderful if Maki-chan and Miki-chan can spend time together there. Yeah! Her work here is complete, Yuna-san. Yeah, looks like it. Thank you for everything. No problem. Ugh, Megumi's glaring at me again. 
We should head back to the roof to discuss what we'll do from here. Okay! With that, the two ghosts, you know, kindred spirits, floated up toward the roof. Unable to follow them that way, I trudged over to the school building in the stairs. Today's the last day of May. Tomorrow, June begins. This month turned out to be a little too exciting. But as long as I'm with these two, I bet June's going to be just the same. Listening to their energetic, annoying conversations while I eat my lunch, accidents, running around and cleaning after school, seeing surprising new expressions on the faces of the people I've met, it was that sort of May. After school, the same broadcasting room as always, the same trio as always. I'm here, Umi's here, and Nena's here. Yep, it's the same after school as always. Hey, come on! Let's go to this one! I bet it'll be super fun! I told you I'd go, didn't I? Then it's just Nena. Come on, Nena! Let's go! Aw, oh, jeez, she's still sleeping. Come on, get up, Nina. Listen to me. Umi started trying to wake Nina up as if she had no idea how that would go. Just leave her be already. The always noisy Umi, who pulls the two of us around everywhere. And the always sleeping Nina, who really does fall asleep sometimes. And me, who just plays it cool while constantly dealing with these two. We've always been together, before starting school here and the whole time since. It started in middle school. We all happened to end up in the same class. We hadn't known each other's names or faces at all before that. I didn't know anything about Umi until that first time she talked to me. It was right after our first homeroom of the school year, after the entrance ceremony. Umi spoke to me out of the blue. I'd already begun developing my nasty personality back then, and I think I was pretty defensive during that first conversation. But Umi paid that no mind and dragged me over to Nena's seat with no explanation. Uh, I think Nena had already developed her sleepy habits by then, too. I'm pretty sure she was face down on her desk napping. And Umi had suddenly declared, with no preface. Hey, isn't it funny how our names are one, two, three? This must be fate, right? We should be friends! Uh, what is this chick? An idiot? I thought. Just because we're one, two, three, and the kanji in my name is Pear, not two. I thought it was stupid and trying to go home, but Umi had grabbed my hand and glared at her and her eyes had met. And they were just like... absolutely sparkling. Like she thought there was nothing at all wrong with what she'd said. I already knew it. Uh, there's no getting out of this. She's gonna drag me around no matter what I do. And I was right. We've been together ever since. I guess we've been friends. The three of us, with... Umi at the center. Hey, Sasa! Uh, whoa! I felt a poke on my arm and turned around to find Umi's face right in front of mine. Too close! Too close! Wh what Here! Have some of this soda! Huh? She was holding out a plastic bottle with the cap removed, intentionally covering the label with her hands. Uh, this is one of our new recommendations. You got some weird thing again, Umi? It's a new kind of soda! You can't go wrong! Come on, drink it! It's really not good! Why do you always buy this stuff? And why do you make me drink it? Cause it's fun! You've gotta try out new stuff with your friends, don't you think? There it is again. And we really enjoy stuff like this. And that word. Friends. She always pushes it on us for the tiniest reasons. With no regard for how we feel. On, drink it! Really? She doesn't care at all how we feel. Don't you understand? You've already had some of that. You've put your mouth on it already. Even if you're friends with them, would you really try to get someone else to drink it? I guess it's fine if you're friends. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I took the bottle from her and brought it to my lips. I could tell it was a little wet already. And... My heart was ready to burst out of my chest. I tipped the bottle back to hide that fact. The carbonation popped against my tongue, 
It was sweet. And the flavor that spread through my mouth. What was it? A little bitter? Well, how is it? It's kind of strangely bitter. <laughs> it's new bitter melon soda on sale today. You're the worst. I thrust the bottle back at Umi. Who the hell came up with this flavor? Some idiot? Die. You really gotta drink shitty soda with your friends, right? Okay, you're next, Nina. Nina, come on! Wake up and drink this! No way. I'm not gonna drink it if it tastes bad. She really just does whatever she wants, that Umi. Why does she impose herself on people just because they're her friends? Even with someone like me. I know I look a little unapproachable. My hair has been long since I was a kid, and I was teased for looking like a ghost or a monster in kindergarten because of it. My eyes look a little sharp without any makeup, and now I purposefully emphasize that. And I had a typical case of 8th grader syndrome in middle school. I packed around half a notebook tight with my own methods for fortune telling, all perfectly organized, and I'd even handmade my own tarot cards. You might guess I had a period where I avoided people, thinking I didn't need friends and that it was cooler to be alone. Because of my attitude, people didn't talk to me unless they needed to. People excluding Umi. Umi. Umi with her insistence about friends and friendship. It's so bad sometimes I wonder if she has a condition or something. She's really curious, and she loves things like events and new products. She's the type who could have fun no matter what happens. She acts on her ideas as soon as she has them, and without thinking them through. It makes her seem kind of unstable. But she doesn't hide anything, so you know when she's happy or mad. She's friendly and can get along with anyone, never timid about introductions. I've known that since we became friends. And she's weirdly stubborn. That's probably part of the reason for her friend-friend thing. She has all sorts of things I don't. I'm not jealous but I admire her energy. She's loud and just plain annoying, but she's my friend. She is, and yet. We'd picked Kokono Suboshi girls together, passed our exams, and started school here. Umi really was just a friend to me before that. A precious one. But on the day of the entrance ceremony, when I'd seen Umi in her new uniform, my heart had throbbed. She'd spoken to me the same as she always did, but I found myself unable to reply. I thought it was just my imagination. I hadn't understood it. But the feeling I'd felt then had stayed with me. It hadn't faded. And it had grown. It had become clear to me. I'm certain now that I love Umi. I realized that just a little while ago. A year after our entrance ceremony. I wanted to hold my head and scream again. Like when I found that notebook I thought I'd hidden away. Ever since then, I've been trapped between heaven and hell. Every time Umi talks to me, or hugs me, or, or smiles at me, I'm so happy I could soar. But I don't let it show on my face. I'm just as curt and cruel as always. Then I regret my attitude and get depressed. Every day I'm thinking stupid thoughts like earlier, when Umi gave me the bottle and I thought, this is an indirect kiss. Isn't it? I wonder if this will ever end. <sighs> I gotta pee. Club started as always, and we reviewed our noon show and planned for next week. Umi took control as usual. Nena and I provided some kind of banter, and we eventually got our work done. And Nena stood up unsteadily at what appeared to be a good stopping point. Uh, let us guess what's coming next. P? I'm coming with! Come on, Sasa, you too! Yup. What? You don't need to go. It's fine, it's fine! We all go to the bathroom together! After all, we're friends, aren't we? Why does Umi like going to the bathroom together so much? Is that like on Umi's friend checklist somewhere? It probably is. What? You're coming with me? Can you cut that out already? Nana and I were both pretty stumped about this. Oh, come on! Let's go! Everybody up! You don't have to get so excited about going to the bathroom. What did I tell you? Umi walked past me, dragging Nana by the arm. 
I wasn't jealous that they were holding hands or anything. After all, Nana's my friend, too. But I do sometimes wonder what I'd think if it were my hand she were grasping. After all, I love Umi. I love her. I wonder what would happen if I told Umi that. I don't think Umi dislikes me or anything. But I don't know if she'd accept my love. My desire for a relationship with her. That wouldn't normally happen. My feelings are weird. It's strange that I love Umi, even though we're both girls. That I love her so much. Even Umi will be a little freaked out by that. Wouldn't she? Nena, too. And if I freaked both of them out, I know our friendship would be over. If that happened, Umi will be sad, I bet. I don't know about Nena. Either way, the three of us wouldn't be able to hang out like this anymore. That can't happen. So I can't say it. I love Umi. But Nena is my precious friend, too. We can only be friends with Umi at our center. I can't ruin what we have now. Things are fine as they are. But... Come on, Sasa! Hurry up! I love you, Umi. And I want you to know... Let's go! Project! Project.